Okay, let's talk about a common digestive problem that a lot of people get. Basically, bloating, you know, that stomach where, where you know, feels like your stomach's all distended and, you know, you feel just don't feel good, very uncomfortable. Of course, bloating, uh, a bloated stomach in the last couple of years in bodybuilding, you see a lot of professional bodybuilders with apparently bloated stomachs where it's kind of a weird, apparent, uh, weird appearance because they look very muscular everywhere. And yet they have this kind of bloated stomach when they're standing relaxed that looks like they are, they're pregnant. I, I did a video a couple of years ago on my theories as to what causes that. So I'm not going to get into that in this video. If you're interested, just do a search for that uh, on YouTube uh, about what causes the bloated belly look in bodybuilding. Uh, but in this one, I'm going to talk about the more common bloated belly, which you, can, which you get from eating certain type of foods which produce a lot of, an, let's say, intestinal gas, that type of thing, uh, uh, or abdominal distension, or th to put it more properly. Uh, about 30, 16 to 31% of the population experiences bloating at one time or another. Uh, it, it's, you it could be triggered by eating a large meal. Uh, when I used to go to these all-you-can-eat buffets, on, the, on when I used, to go, I used to diet and go off my diet, I'd go to these all-you-can-eat buffets and I would just stuff my face when I left. It looked like I was pregnant because I was so bloated. That, that was just food from overeating. But, it, you know, you could get bloating from, uh, 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 you know, either eat, eating too much food or, or eating particular foods that contain gas. Some people, though, if they get bloating all the time, it's a chronic problem. Uh, so he, let's, let's talk about ways to kind of cut down or eliminate the bloating feeling. Uh, mo a lot of people get, as I said, they get the bloated feeling from an excess of gas uh, in the gut. What are these gases? The gases, oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, methane. They're in introduced when you swallow too much air. For example, if you eat too fast, a lot of times you'll swallow air. And, and then the foods, a lot of times the foods will get fermented by bacteria in your intestine. And, uh, and as a byproduct of, their, of the digestion of some of these foods, including fiber, by the way, It'll produce gas or flatulence. That's why if you start adding f dietary fiber to your diet, you should always do it gradually. Otherwise, it, you, you'll get, you can get bloated and you get a lot of gas if you add too much fiber too soon. You've got to give your body a chance to get used to it. Uh, certain foods uh, that, that contain compounds that are fermented in your colon, again, fiber, sugar, alcohol, sugar alco alcohols, like uh, I'm trying to remember the name of some of those uh, sugar alcohols. There's one in particular that does that. Uh, uh, and, and FODMAPs, F-O-D-M-A-P-S. These are, again, these are types of carbohydrates that aren't fully digested, and they tend to uh, cause a bloating effect. As a matter of fact, uh, the, these people that are claimed to be uh, sensitive to gluten, a lot of people will, gluten is a protein found in grain products, a lot of people claim to be uh, gluten insensitive, where if they eat gluten, they get this bloated, uh, uncomfortable gastrointestinal feeling. Well, in most cases, that's not from the gluten. The only people that are truly sensitive to gluten in most cases are people with a disease called celiac disease, which is a genetic disease where they body their body can't break down gluten, so it, you know it kind of ferments and causes all the the uh, gastrointestinal symptoms. But other people. That, that bloated, gassy feeling is not from gluten, but from fo FODMAPs, F-A-D-M-A-P-S. Again, these are certain types of carbohydrates. Uh, some people can't break down the lactose or sugar in milk. They get the, again, bloated, gassy feeling. Some people can't handle fructose. To, uh, they eat too much fructose or fructose. They also get the gas. Again, swallowing excess air when you're eating too fast, that can cause bloating. Uh, increased fluid in your bowels, uh, you know, uh, something that causes diarrhea, maybe uh, a type of bacterial of, of that you eat in the food that can do that. Uh, imbalances in the gut microbiome itself, which is the population of intestinal uh, bacteria, yeast, and fungi. If there's, a, uh, it's called a dysbiosis. If there's an imbalance of bacteria down there, that also can cause types of bloating. Uh, there's no actual, usual kind of physical reason for it. In other words, it's not like there's an abnormality in digestive organs. Uh, it, it's usually just from certain foods that you eat. Uh, 
stress, anxiety, high fat meals, uh, also related to bloating. Uh, uh, some people can get bloated from certain muscle reflex in the, in the abdominal wall and diaphragm. In some cases, bloating could be a symptom of a medical condition or an infection, a malabsorption syndrome, a bowel obstruction, liver disease, or even cancer. The only way to find that out is to get a medical examination. But what are the, what are the specific foods that are most commonly associated with the bloating, gassing feeling? These are non-digestible or poorly digested compounds. These include insoluble and soluble fiber, sugar alcohols, as I said, that, that, that a lot of these uh, carbohydrate-free ice creams and drinks, they'll say no carbohydrates. What they do is they substitute sugar alcohols for carbohydrates because the sugar alcohols can't be digested. So they could say that it contains, car, it's, you know, no net carbohydrates, it usually says, but it actually contains carbohydrates as sugar alcohols. But you see, the sugar alcohols aren't digestive. So, so in that sense, they say it's carbohydrate-free. What they don't tell you is that you can only tolerate sugar alcohol up to a certain point. If you take too much, you get a roaring case of diarrhea. I mean, really bad because this stuff is passing right through you. Uh, there's certain sugars that can cause uh, uh, bloating. One's called raffinose, and, and as I said, large amounts of fructose in some people can also cause bloating. Again, sh uh, fiber is great. Uh, you, you really, I'm going to do an article in my Applied Metabolics newsletter about the importance of dietary fiber because I really believe most people don't e ingest enough dietary fiber. Fiber is the main food for your intestinal microbiome, which is one of the hottest topics in, in, me in medicine. Again, the intestinal microbiome is the collection of bacteria, fungi, other organisms that reside in the colon, large intestine that control a myriad of, of body reactions, including how you digest protein, carbohydrates, whether you gain weight, whether you get fat, whether you lose fat. 99% uh, of your immune system interacts with the intestinal microbiome. And the key way to keep your uh, intestinal microbiome healthy is to avoid refined carbohydrates, refined fat, and to eat a good amount of dietary fiber, at least 30 grams a day or more. But Again, if you're not used to eating dietary fiber, start slow. You know, so you know, don't don't just you know eat a lot of it. Otherwise, you'll get bloated. The, the the specific foods that are most associated with bloating include vegetables, cruciferous vegetables especially. That's like broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, cabbage. Some fruits are associated with bloating, especially if you eat large amounts. Prunes, apples, pears, peaches, whole grains, wheat, oats, wheat germ, wheat bran. Beans, of course, beans are famous for gas. I mean, that's been known for years. Beans, uh, lentils, peas, baked beans. The sugar alcohols I mentioned, uh, specifically xylitol, uh, which is actually very good for your teeth, by the way. But that's uh, I wrote about that in Applied Metabolics. Sorbitol, that's what I was trying to remember earlier. Sorbitol, found in a lot of foods that say they're carbohydrate-free. Mannitol, these are various, again, these are, are kind of uh, uh, sugar alcohols sugar-free chewing gum. It's very unlikely that you'll chew, you'll uh, chew enough sugar-free chewing gum to cause bloating. I've never heard that happening, but I guess it's an outside pop, uh, a possibility. And then, again, a, a small percentage of people have lactose intolerance, uh, that you have to have an enzyme produced in your body called lactase, which breaks down lactose. A lot of, uh, not a lot, but a lot, some adults don't produce enough lactase to uh, break down the lactose or milk sugar. So once they, uh, once they, uh, if they drink any type of like milk or something containing lactose, they get what they call lactose intolerance, marked by gas, flatulence, bloating, that type of thing. Uh, so uh, luckily, they've been selling for years. They've been selling milks that contain lactase already in it, so it breaks down the lactose. You don't have any problem with it. Yogurt, uh, it's a pre-digested type of food that also. The lactose is already digested in it. You don't have any problem with that either. Uh, so, you know, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, what else? Uh, again, you want to in uh, increase your fiber intake. Always drink adequate fluids, at least 6 to 8.5 cups of fluids a day. Exercise regularly. Uh, you, you, uh, w with the fiber, the one to be careful about is called soluble fiber. 
That's the type found in uh, oatmeal and fruits mainly. Uh, it's also found in some vegetables. That's the type that ferments in the colon. And, and can, and can uh, again, it's reacted on by the intestinal bacteria. It can cause bloating if you eat too much of it. If you eat like normal amounts, don't try and eat like five pounds of broccoli. You won't have uh, any problem with it. Uh, again, you know, that we have that FODMAP, F-A-D-M-O-P. People with irritable bowel syndrome, 66 to 90% of them, they also tend to experience bloating. These food maps are basically fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols. These are what, that's what food maps are made up of. And they can uh, co cause uh, bloating and other symptoms. Uh, they all uh, they tend to also uh, promote the entry of water into the intestine, which can create diarrhea. Foods the high in, the foods that are rich in FODMAPs include grains, wheat and rye, uh, milk, custard, soft cheeses, watermelon, apples, grapefruit, pears. Onions, garlic, leeks, artichoke, asp asparagus, mushrooms, cauliflower, cashews, pistachios. These are some of the healthiest foods, which means it doesn't mean you shouldn't eat them. It should mean that if you're having symptoms such as bloating, you might want to cut it back and experiment to see how much of this uh, of these foods you can eat. Uh, there's some people that when they take probiotic supplements, probiotic supplements are basically uh, types of bacteria that can get into your uh, intestine and help to stabilize the intestinal microbiome. Uh, you could also get prebiotics, which are foods uh, that also are fermentable, that also help to, uh, again, uh, facilitate efficient uh, intestinal microbiome activity and cut down on bloating. These foods include yogurt, kefir, sauerkraut, kombucha tea, Miso and tempa, those are uh, soy products, the last two. Uh, so what else can I tell you about it? Also, again, start with smaller portions of these foods, the healthy foods I just mentioned. Uh, limit, don't, don't eat a lot of salty and fatty foods with them. Uh, eating too much salt can contribute to water retention in the gut and, and lead to feelings of bloating. E eating too much fat at one time can cause intestinal gas and also increase uh, the uh, uh, bloating cessation. Some people have found that uh, peppermint oil uh, can reduce symptoms of bloating and, and distension, uh, especially in people with irritable bowel syndrome. So that might help too. You don't eat too fast. Aerophagia, which is swallowing too much air, that causes bloating in some people. Slow down. Uh, uh, but however, when you swallow excess air, it's more likely to involve uh, result in bol bel belching uh, rather than uh, rather than uh, 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 bloating. Uh, light exercise helps relieve bloating. Uh, don't try and gain weight too much fast. That'll avoid bloating. and build up in fat in the stomach tends to, uh, you know, cause a bloating effect. Uh, you want to also, oh, you could do some abdominal work. Uh, it, uh, you know, it helps to, helps to, seems to help to move things along and prevent bloating. So, that's about it, really. That's all I could say for bloating. Is it's uh, easily avoided. You know, just don't eat fast. If you're having certain foods, if you notice that you get bloated or uh, too much gas afterwards, either cut them out completely or reduce, you know, reduce your intake of them. Cut the portions down, and you should be fine. So that's about it. If you want inf more information on nutrition, exercise science, anti-aging research, fat loss techniques that work, ergogenic aids, hormonal therapy, women's health and fitness supplement science, and many, many other topics. Subscribe to the, today to my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. When, when you subscribe, I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page, where each day I post new information on nutrition, exercise science, and general health. I have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics website, where current subscribers can send me short questions about anything they read in the newsletter or anything that comes to mind, as long as they're short questions. And I think that's about it. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter and adopt a dog. Thank you for listening.